My name is Sam Baknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. 1.4 billion Chinese. Is that not enough? <laughs> Do we need more Chinese? It seems that the Chinese government thinks so. The Chinese leadership is worried. The population has been on the decline for two years in a row, signifying a seemingly inexorable plunge in birth rates to half the rate of 2016. Marriages are at an all-time low, deaths at an all-time high, as the population ages. Not a pretty picture. China is also one of the most expensive places on earth to raise a child in. The same trends occur in the majority of the members of the European Union and even in Russia. It's not unique to China. China's one-child policy, imposed often cruelly between 1980 and 2015, has been reversed. Now, couples can have up to three children. But it is way too late. Times have changed. Nowadays, even an only child is considered a career retarding nuisance the world over or at best a new age exercise at luxurious self-actualization in one's late 30s or early 40s rearing a child is an exorbitant sapping undertaking half of all offspring cohabit with their parents for decades the sacrifices required in terms of professional advancement, savings, old age security and privacy are mind boggling. Children are also a marker of gender disparities, inequality and equity in inequity. The onerous burden of reproduction and childcare falls disproportionately on the mother, and in this sense very little has changed. China has been doing its best recently, instituting new incentives for motherhood, such as tax breaks, housing subsidies, and an extended maternity leave. Yet the fact is that poor people have more children. The highest birth rates in the world are registered in Africa and parts of Asia with less than $1 a day in income. Birth rates decline as people become more educated and wealthier. The lowest birth rates in the world are in Germany, Scandinavia, and California. Even within rich polities, poor minorities have the most children, the household. People tend to rationalize their decision to not pro procreate by using economic excuses. It's too expensive. I can't afford it. The truth is that many people simply put career, money-making, and enjoying life and seeing the world ahead of having children. It is a shift in social values and priorities, not a decision driven by harsh economic realities, as some would have. Not every problem can be solved by throwing money at it. Modern civilization is self-centered, individualistic, hedonistic, and narcissistic. People put themselves and their interests first, children come last. Experience from countries such as Israel, France, Germany and Scandinavia, where childbirth and child rearing are heavily subsidized, this experience shows that government intervention is futile and a colossal waste of resources. In the medium to long term, it has zero insignificant statistical effect. In all these countries, despite, despite the fact that these policies are still being implemented, population growth is flat to negative, with the exception of Israel and France, which have a lot of immigrants. So instead of encouraging women to have more children, the government should make sure that current families and households are well catered to. Workplace discrimination against pregnant women and women in childbirth ages should be outlawed and persecuted, prosecuted. Daycare centers should be opened and made available to young mothers. Parenting classes and free medical care should be rendered accessible and affordable. A whole gamut of goods and services from public transport to formula milk to textbooks 
should be made available and free to families with more than four children. Maternity wards should be improved and modernized. New mothers should have preference in professional reskilling and retraining and a host of other government services. Maybe this would reverse the tide. I'm far from sure.